So I'm going to try something a little bit different this episode. I'm going to leave a link to my notes in the description down below. I'll probably stay there for a little while, so like a week or so, and then I'll take them off. That's so that I can just remove the wall of text. With that, let's just get into the tactics. So I think this is a really good example of how Leicester City set up. So building out the back, I think they're very brave. I think they need to give kudos to uh, the two centre midfielders in Ndidi and Tielemans. So typically they set up in a 2-4-1-3. So you'd have Tielemans and in DD in line with the fullbacks and then just ahead of them you'd have Madison who was trying to stay whichever side that the goalkeeper or centre backs would play the ball he would try to stay towards that side so that he could then link between the fullbacks or centre midfielders and the forwards. Typically Manchester City faced them in a 4-2-4 shape so the 4-2-4 would try and engage near side so let's say in this scenario the ball didn't go to Bertrand instead it went towards Castagna's side then Manchester City's players were, were going towards the deepest of the Leicester City players. So actually, Castagna and Bertrand wouldn't necessarily be marked. You'd instead get Grealish going towards maybe the centre-back, Ronaldo Silva kind of covering a pass into, into Tielemans, and then you'd have Didi covered and the other centre-back. And they were actually allowing their full-back, so Carl Walker and Cancelo, to press the full-backs of Leicester at times. This does sound a little bit sketchy. But because of this press, the only kind of comfortable pass, in air quotes, was to the far-sided full-back. So in this scenario, we were saying, oh, the ball is initially passed Castagna, the far side fullback would become Bertrand. So Bertrand is kind of left free. In actuality, um, the f um, typically Gundogan was actually kind of covering that. He was aware that that was on, but he wasn't as tight as the others near side of the ball would get. So this is another good example. Torres was pressuring the ball um, with Sionchi. Sionchi passes it back to Schmeichel, but then Torres continues towards Schmeichel for pressure on Schmeichel. And instead of Grealish just kind of staying with Castagna, he's actually running towards Sionchi so that the pass that would be on for Schmeichel would be the pass over Grealish. And that will test um, Schmeichel's passing ability and decision-making ability. Will he try the difficult pass over Castagna? Will he be able to pull it off if he gets it wrong? And Grealish gets the ball instead, then Castagna's out of the game. So it was a very interesting game that Manchester City were trying with their press. Here we have an example of Leicester City playing the ball long. If one of the Leicester City players gets it a little bit wrong, passing out of the back, then Manchester City can collapse in on them. And this is a good example of that. So here, actually, the ball kind of gets turned over a little bit. So Leicester City try the ball over the top towards Bertrand. It doesn't really work out, but luckily for them, indeed, he's able to get his long spindly legs on the end of it. And Bertrand's momentum kind of takes him into that space between the two and the four forwards of Manchester the city and then indeed he's able to pass the ball into him. This is where Manchester City are able to punish a relatively over enthusiastic pass by Bertrand to Tielemans. So because Manchester City have all these players you know high up the pitch when the ball does turn over here because of the really difficult pass that Bertrand gave to Tielemans then Bernardo Silva is able to just run straight at the defence. There's no there's no centre midfield for Leicester to be able to screen. Bertrand tries his best and actually puts quite a bit of pressure on Bernardo Silva um, and because of this 4-2-4 the Manchester City have. Grealish is actually one of the highest players and he forces Leicester City's defenders, their centre-back Sionchu in this case, to just have to retreat. You don't have the comfort or the option of being able to step out because Grealish will run in behind you. Whereas Grealish was pressing here instead, then that isn't as much of a problem. Having said that, I think it'll be nice to show how Leicester City wanted to build up. So we mentioned that 2-4-1-3. In this scenario, we have a throw-in. So initially the ball's thrown in, it goes back to Vestergaard, and then he's able to play it into Ndidi. You see Tielemans here as well is just kind of sitting a little bit ahead of him. Obviously, both of them providing themselves an option, never shying away from the ball. And Manchester City doing what Manchester City do, so keeping the pitch very narrow off throw-ins. So you can see here, Jack Grealish, super narrow. This is meant to be your left winger, and he's you know basically cutting the pitch in half. And every player that Leicester City have really close to the ball as an option, Manchester City are pressing them really intensely. Despite all the pressure, Leicester City are able to kind of keep a calm head. Indeed, he passes it back, and they're able to circulate to the far side. Being that Manchester City had cut the pitch and were as narrow as they were we pointed to where Grealish was it then meant that you did have space far side um, and you see Leicester City be able to benefit off that with a little bit more space for them to be able to operate in uh, with Castagna and Albrighton eventually they're able to escape out on the right hand side so in this scenario we had Jack Grealish putting pressure onto Sionchi Sionchi passes it back to Schmeichel so this goes back to what I mentioned earlier about the forwards pressing the centre back centre midfielders and kind of leaving the full backs to be pressed by players deeper for Manchester 
to City. So because of the pressure that Jack Grealish put onto Suyuncu and then onto the goalkeeper as well, then Schmeichel tries to play it over the Manchester City press towards Castagna to try and create a little bit more space for Castagna. Old Brighton had actually moved into a more central position, which you see here. And I think going back to what I mentioned before about Manchester City's fullbacks being the one pressing the fullbacks of Leicester instead, you can see that here with Cancelo. Look how aggressive he is. He's pressing from quite a deep position, covering maybe 10, 15 yards to go and get on Castagna's first touch. With any long passes, your chance of successfully making that pass obviously drops. I think it's for most teams around 70%, whereas if it's shorter passes, you're thinking you know, five to 10 yards, then it's maybe 90 uh, for some teams like Manchester City and then up in the very high 80s for other teams. I think Leicester City did quite well on some of their longer passes um, into the fullbacks when they were stationed high. So in this scenario, we have Bertrand uh, receiving the ball from uh, Schmeichel and he's able to kind of take a touch on his chest and drive into uh, the space behind the press of Manchester City. This scenario also shows what I was talking about before about the far side of fullback actually being tracked by Gundogan. So in this scenario you can see Gundogan is, has tried to stay or get close to Bertrand so that even when the ball is played to him the more difficult pass there's someone there to at least test his touch and in this case Bertrand's touch was impeccable. Of course with any press there's always the chance that it's beaten and I think this um, this scenario is a good example of what can happen when Leicester City were able to make that longer pass and beat the press of Manchester City. Leicester weren't just playing these long balls over the top of the press, they also played it through the press at times as well. So in this scenario, you have Suyonchi firing a ball from defence to a forward here, Vardy dropping off the Manchester City defensive line. This was something that they tried to mix into the game as well, whether it was from Sionshu or the centre backs, or also from Tielemans trying to fire into maybe Madison or um, Harvey Barnes or one of the other forwards. So along with playing it more directly to Inacho, Leicester City did go on a lot of counter-attacks or really direct play. This was partially due to beating Manchester City's press, but also later in the game, just due to urgency. They didn't have that long to be able to try and at least get a point out of the game. Okay, so Manchester City set up in a 4-1-5 or 3 two shape. So when they passed out from the goalkeeper, it was the typical shape, so just a 2-3. So you've got Rodri in your CDM position and then your fullbacks are really split. I would call it either a 2-3 or a 4-1, you know, whatever floats your boat. And then as they progress up the pitch, then when the ball goes towards one side, then the far side fullback will pull into more of a centre midfield position. So for example, in this scenario, we've had the ball passed back and forth between Ruben Diaz and Laporte. So when the ball comes back to the right hand side, Carl Walker will stay in his right um, fallback position, whereas Cancelo will pull more into this left centre midfield position. That was useful because it would pull the four forwards of Leicester City in their 4 2 4 um, shape, their defensive shape, more narrow. So already Leicester City's forwards, so we're thinking Harvey Barnes and Albrighton, the wide midfielders were trying to stay relatively narrow and try and help out um, Tielemans and the strikers and, um, and Ndidi just to kind of lock down that centre of the midfield. But because of the movement of those fullbacks um, for Manchester City into a centre midfield position, it actually made passes when Manchester City then passed the ball back. So we just talked about it going towards Walker. And then when they then pulled it back, Cancelo has moved into his centre midfield position. And then there was now a pass out wide relatively easily into whoever was the wide midfield on that side. So in this scenario, we're talking about Grealish. Grealish would be able to drop, which he did often, and be able to receive almost entirely without any obstruction. Yes, Castagna would try and track, but that's considerably easier than having both Albright and Castagna in relatively close proximity. Here, he just has Castagna. On top of that, there's another benefit for Manchester City in that having the fullback for Leicester track the forwards, the wide midfielders of Manchester City as far as they did, it did often leave the centre-backs for Leicester City relatively exposed. So Ferran Torres is happy to run into those spaces when the fullback for Leicester City goes up, meaning that the Leicester City centre-backs have to track that run. But then also to add more complexity to that and more of a problem to that is the movement of Bernardo Silva as well as Gundogan were playing free eights as well. So they would move into those spaces or they would try and move somewhere where the centre-back or the full-back wouldn't be able to easily go. In this example, I have Madison highlighted only because he often tracked the movement of Rodri in that CDM position whilst Manchester City were building up. Going back to what we mentioned with the movement of Manchester City's free eights and the problem that the movement of the fullbacks for Manchester City as well as these free eights caused for the back line of Leicester City. This is a really good example because it shows as Bertrand is about to go out to try and press um, Gabriel Jesus in this situation, 
Gundogan is on his bike. So in that moment that Bertrand is trying to follow the instructions that he's been given, he's been then asked a question, look, do you really want to go out there? And Because obviously, if Gundogan receives the ball in there, Vestergaard has to go out and pressure Gundogan instead. And obviously, Vestergaard's a lot less agile than Gundogan or Bertrand. So it'll be a little bit of a mismatch. So it's better for Bertrand to try and stay and uh, narrow and protect his centre-back. So a little bit later on in the game, um, Manchester City are winning at this point and I think they moved to a little bit more of a 4-3-3 so a little bit more conservative with the positioning of Bernardo Silva and Gundogan to try and disrupt that again um, and kind of mess with the patterns that Leicester players have been able to develop in their heads of how they should track Manchester City. You had Bernardo Silva change where he would position himself so here I have Bernardo Silva highlighted and the problem for all Brighton is that we have Cancelo moving into that left centre midfield position so Albrighton wants to stay there that makes the team at least at that moment more defensively solid uh, so just before the pass is made but then the pass is made out to Bernardo Silva who's pulled out wide so we've got a problem we've got maybe a more technically able uh, player in Bernardo Silva receiving the ball relatively you know without any pressure um, so that's obviously a problem again here we have Bernardo Silva pulling out to that kind of left back position and then when he receives the ball he kind of comes back inside and that allows Cancelo to then go around him and it's pulled Old Brighton in and the problem really for Old Brighton is that obviously he can stay in a position that keeps the team solid but every time he does that he then eventually has to run out to the person that then gets the ball afterwards so in this scenario we're talking about Bernardo Silva having the ball then he'll pass it back um, and then it'll come back to Cancelo well Old Brighton still needs to get out to Cancelo now so he's had to both stay narrow uh, to keep the defensive shape but then he has to do another sprint afterwards as well and you keep doing this for 90 minutes you just wear him out and he did so much running him and Tielemans on that side Uh, so I really wasn't sure if I wanted to actually discuss this goal. I thought there's quite a bit of luck involved, really. I think Manchester City could have scored other chances this game. They definitely had some really great um, opportunities earlier on. I remember some double blocks, I think. Vestergaard did really well for one of them. I do think that Manchester City probably just edged it for me. I do think that there were relatively good chances for Leicester we're thinking of obviously the offside goal that's you know an inch or two Vardy just being able to get on side just a little bit earlier that's potentially a goal so yeah I think fine margins but I'd slightly give it to Manchester City I guess one thing about this goal that kind of goes back to some of the tactics we mentioned before was the movement of Bernardo Silva and Gundogan so you see here the kind of questions that they're posing to the Leicester City back line so we have here Bernardo Silva um, and he's running inside to pull the fullback for Leicester City more narrow making it more difficult for him to be able to go out and immediately press Grealish whereas on the near side with Gundogan who's typically doing a similar role is pulling away and you can see here with Johnny Evans that he knows that his role is to try and prevent Gundogan being able to attack this is something that Leicester City tried throughout the match as well where the centre backs would try and track um, forwards that dropped as well so you saw here with Johnny Evans he did it here I think they, there were another couple of occasions as well you saw it I think once it happened where Sterling actually ended up fouling Johnny Evans they were trying to defend defend on the front foot obviously it's good if it comes off it's a little bit scary but I think considering how much the rest of the team had to kind of play front foot you needed everyone else to kind of follow too okay so the ball gets out to Grealish he's able to take it under control Castagna comes out to face him Old Brighton tucks inside quite a bit I'm not entirely sure about this personally for me like I get that he's trying to prevent Grealish from being able to kind of cut inside and then shoot but obviously it then leaves this really nice channel for Cancelo to eventually get it and I know that that's hindsight bias but I also feel like seeing this does that not just seem like this scenario screams a cutback um obviously that's preferable because that's outside of the box and being a defender it's all about probabilities it's all about trying to minimize the um, xg of whichever shot they eventually end up taking you can't prevent all shots so you'll prefer the one taken from outside but it did feel like he was being maybe a tiny bit overly conservative but again this is Grealish that Castan is defending so I'm not going to be too critical about all Brighton eventually Grealish is able to pull the ball back and Cancelo absolutely wallops it uh, so this is where I think the luck is involved yes I think you can create your luck which is what most people say but here the ball hits Sionchu 
who's obviously faced up. He's trying to watch where the ball's going, try to get his body in the way. And whilst this is happening, Bernardo Silva's actually peeling around to the left-hand side. So then when the ball luckily bounces off Sionchu towards Bernardo Silva, well, Bernardo Silva's already in kind of a better position to be able to kind of hit it straight away. Whereas Sionchu has taken the blow and then had to try and respond and the ball is bouncing away from him towards Bernardo Silva. I think that makes it more in Bernardo Silva's favour that then he's able to get, you know, the shot off. But obviously good movement by him, but I still think there's luck involved there. It could have just as easily been that Sionchu, you know, hits it away or it deflects anywhere else and then it's not a goal so it seems a little bit questionable to say oh yeah Bernardo Silva amazing yeah he totally read this because I don't think he necessarily did he just did something that he should do and then if he's fortunate the ball will bounce to him thanks for watching um, if you could support us by leaving a like leaving a comment maybe saying what match you think we should do next week going forward what you thought of the match um, and Leicester City's chances leaving the comments down below and with that we're out